Hi and welcome to the vlog. I uh, just thought I'd show you a few of our neighbours here at Talksy that have been uh, with us ever since we've been here the last 10 weeks. Quite noisy sometimes, quite demanding for food, but uh, they usually quieten down when it gets dark, so they're not too bad after all really. So, uh, last time we spoke, um, we were just trying to decide which engine to, to go for. Um, so, just to recap, these were the options, these five options. Um, so, of these, one and two we decided not to go for on the basis that they were uh, refurbed engines and we were looking for something uh, probably more long term. I mean, they had a, I think three months to a year's warranty on them, but um, we're, we're planning all things being well to be on this boat for another three, four, five years possibly. So, uh, so we figured that we want something that's had a longer warranty and um, yeah, it's going to be possibly more reliable, hopefully. Uh, so we discarded those two. Um, the brand new complete beater engine uh, was out of the question because the lead time was just so great. It was like 16, 18 weeks. So uh, we decided against that. The next option, which we did favor quite a lot to start with was the long block, which is a brand new injected uh, block, which would just take our starter motor and alternators and other ancillaries on our gearbox. Um, so basically we have a brand new block again, you know, all, all complete internals of the engine and externals, uh, just be our ancillaries added to it. So that did seem like a, uh, the best option. Um, but then the lead time for that kept going up and up and up. It started at four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, and then it was like oh, January, possibly February. And, um, and we, were, we were still in September at the time. And, and I think the reason for this was it wasn't, it wasn't RCR's fault. It was um, more to do with the uh, issue relating to Beta being able to get the Kubota engines into the country. So the last option was the, the Nanny engine, which is a, an engine we hadn't heard of before. Um, but having spoken to a few people that are on the uh, moorings near us, a few had actually used them and said they were reliable. Um, it was a complete brand new engine, five year warranty. Um, but we were initially a bit concerned because we wanted a beta because it's a British marinized engine. We, we know the parts are easily available. We've managed to get like all the service items quite easily from um, most of the uh, Chandlers as we began on the network. And um, we were a bit concerned about what it'd be like with a nanny engine, whether we'd be able to get the parts okay. But um, having done a bit of research, it seems like we can get the parts. Um, so um, that, that, um, that issue was, was um, eliminated. Um, so, well, we thought it is still the same basic engine. It's still a Kubota four-cylinder engine, the same as the Beta, but it's marinized in a different way. So having made that decision, we had about a three-week wait. Um, so in that time, we were stuck at Torxy. We were at Torxy for a total of 10 weeks. And um, I've got to say that during that time, the Canal River Trust have been really, really good to us. Um, Neil, who's a lock keeper at Torxy, was um, very accommodating. He put us onto a little mooring in the corner out of the way. And, and also the, the, the regional office of uh, CRT, we spoke to, to, to Yasmin, kept her informed on, on what was going on with our boat. And uh, she was very understanding and accommodating. And she extended our stay um, as and when we needed it to be and, and until, we, um, until we actually started moving. And another thing about Torxy was that um, where we were moored, was right by the locked gate entrance into uh, Torxy, I think it's called Torxy Cruiser Club. And the, the, the ladies and gentlemen from that club were, were very, very kind to us. They often stop for a chat and ask, oh, how's the engine doing? Is it here yet? When's it coming? Anything you need? And uh, often try and get us electric supply for us, um, told us where to go shopping. And um, yeah, gen generally it was, they were full of advice and and, uh, and it's nice to have a chat with them when they, when they were going down to their own boats to uh, to do a bit of work or go out on the boats. So yeah, that was that was that was good. So a date was set for the new engine to be fitted. That was the uh, Friday the 29th of October. And the night before I just moved Maggie May, just pulled it back up onto the uh, the wharf where there's a concrete hard standing where the van could get down to um, so that they could uh, easily use the crane to get the get the um, engine into the boat. So promptly the next morning Peter and Sean, the same guys that removed the old beater engine, they arrived prompt early in the morning and uh, started looking at how they're going to get this, this engine in. So um, 
It was, it was a similar sort of physical size that was the same as the beta, but uh, the ancillary items were different and the bracketry was different, so it wasn't necessarily a straightforward job of just plonking it straight in. Um, and as it turned out, they did need to remove uh, one of the alternators, a um, couple of hoses, and uh, one of the engine mounts had to come off and able to get it to, to swing down through the small gap. And uh, once they got it in there, they spun it round lined it up and dropped it down in, into position. that back leg okay just so we can get this back end across a little bit right so right. what's the in these are uh, 17s <coughs> can you get to it socket um, so one thing about this was that um, when they came to take the old engine out um, We'd, but we'd all assume that um, it would be another beta going in, so uh, no, no dimensions were taken for, for engine mounts. Um, but of course, that changed. Now we ended up with a, a nanny engine, so the engine mounts were slightly different. But um, from, from a photograph that Peter had taken, they estimated really where, where the um, where the engine mount should be, and um, yeah, they, they did a really good job of it. They, they got them just about right, so they put it down in position, and. Um, the holes for the engine mounts were pretty central on the two channel section bearers that, uh, that run through to take the engine. So they lined it up and uh, drilled the holes for the bolts and uh, bolted it down. So once the engine was in there were, there were a few issues that had to be resolved. Um, when, we put, when they put the coolant in they couldn't get it all to go in correctly. Uh, it turned out to be a bit of an airlock where the oil cooler is. So uh, once that was resolved we managed to get a full a full tank of, um, of coolant into the into the keel. Uh, another issue was the domestic alternators weren't charging correctly and the light wasn't coming on. Um, and the, 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 one of the worst problems was there was a heavy vibration, um, especially when you put it into drive, it sort of juddered right throughout the whole of the, the hull. Um, but, but time was running out that day, so um, they arranged for a date to come back and to uh, take another look at these issues. So on their return they took a look at the issues I mentioned earlier. Um, the, the vibration issue uh, was resolved by just increasing the tick over revs by about 50 revs from 850 to 900 and uh, that resolved that issue. The domestic alternators we thought had been resolved because um, there was a, like a current going to one of the posts and it was increasing um, when the engine was uh, turned on, so that was assumed that, um, that it, was, uh, it was resolved. Uh, the next day um, we went for a cruise to Saxaby to try it out. <laughs> yeah, look! <laughs> Got an engine! <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot better, yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Cheerio. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all seemed good. It was running very quietly. Uh, the gauges are working okay, and um, yeah, it, it seemed, seemed pretty good. Got up to temperature. That was an issue, and uh, also, um, yeah, it, it seemed to be running well in forward and reverse. Gave it a little bit of a try out. Uh, got down to Saxaby, then noticed that the um, the batteries hadn't charged. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I spoke to uh, uh, RCR. Uh, they got they got back to me and said that um, uh, someone would come out and take a look, uh, which they did a couple of days later, and it turned out to be that the um, uh, the domestic alternator needed a dedicated earth lead to it and um, so once that was installed yep sure enough my batteries uh, started charging so there so that was resolved 
and um, yeah, they were pretty much fixed really. Um, I had gone for um, uh, the deluxe gauges on the Nanny, um, rather than have the lights, uh, which I had on the beta control panel. Uh, the reason for this was that when we were on the on the Trent, and uh, it all went wrong for us, I, I figured that if I'd had um, gauges, I could see that the temperature was rising and the oil pressure was dipping down, um, then I could have maybe have, um, have, have done something earlier. But um, just having the lights to, I mean, really with the lights, it's almost like you know the, the, it, it, it's already gone wrong when the lights have come on. Whereas with the gauges, you do get a bit of warning as they start to rise, so you can take action earlier. So yeah, that was the reason I went for those. So, uh, what, what have we learnt from this, uh, this experience we've had? Um, well, I'd, I'd say firstly, uh, it is, it is quite handy if you can buddy up with someone else when you're going out on the tidal waters, uh, because you have got the opportunity then that if something does go wrong, um, you, you can you can help one another out, which um, which is what happened to us. We, we were fortunate, really, that uh, there were two of us, so we managed to sort of tie up together and uh, managed to. <laughs> managed to get to safety, the two of us tied together. So that, that, I'd say buddying up, if you, it's, it's worth doing. If, if there's someone around, you know, it's worth, worth doing that. Uh, secondly, um, the VHF radios. I mean, what Being buddied up was one thing, but having the VHF radio to communicate easily with each other um, was, was very, very important. It, it did help us an awful lot. Um, these VHF radios, they're quite cheap these days. Um, um, and it does enable you to contact the uh, the, the locks and the ports um, easily, um, and uh, you can also hear what other craft are doing around you. So you've, you've got a good you've got a good understanding of of the, the movements of um, the water and the craft around you. You do need to take a course to have one of these radios and use it correctly. Um, it's only like a one day course, and there's an exam at the end of it, uh, which is done by the uh, Royal Yacht Association. Um, but yeah, it's, it's well worth having. Thirdly, and what's quite a game changer for us really, was the uh, the anchor. Um, ours is only 12 kilo, uh, and it's uh, yeah, it's, it's it's enough to stop two boats. On, I thought I said before they might be 17 ton, but I think it's probably less than that. Maybe about 14, 15 ton each. So so 28 or 30 ton of of, of boat was stopped by this one anchor and its chain and rope. Um, so yeah, it was, it, was, it was more than sufficient, I thought. But then when I read the spec for it, it's, it's, called, a, it's called a Danforth anchor. But when you read the spec, as I've got a little spreadsheet on here, it, it, it seems like uh, we should have had one at least twice, twice the size to, to top our one boat. Um, but what I would say is that just, just manhandling that 12, 12 kilo anchor was, was quite difficult. Um, so yeah, I don't know, I mean, 24, 24 kilo would be a lot to, to keep moving around especially when you've got to take him out three times but I mean which once would be bad enough though I thought um, I, I suppose maybe you should have then like some sort of winch arrangement with something that big I don't know but uh, I haven't seen I haven't seen many canal boats any narrow boats like ours which got a, uh, a chain winch to get the to get the anchor back in again so if anybody can throw some light on this spec uh, yeah please do comment below because I'm not quite sure um, what that relates to but maybe it's to sea conditions maybe you know when you're out at sea stronger currents maybe you need to have that bigger anchor so yeah the fourth thing um, having that cover from RCR was very useful for us um, just having that peace of mind knowing that someone you can phone up and uh, they get out to you and try and uh, try and repair you or possibly recover you um, it's quite it's quite nice to have that uh, we only have the retainer cover which just enables you to get someone out to you um, but there are two other levels of, of, uh, of cover. So um, yeah, I mean, what do they do? So RCR, they uh, not only do rescue and recovery, uh, they do um, uh, replacement parts, uh, crew relays, uh, they even do a home start. And they also do um, supply of uh, new and refurbished engines, like ours for example, when they do, and do the installation as well, which they, which they did for us. Um, yeah, so they're very good. And, and everyone we dealt with at the company uh, was very helpful and knowledgeable and uh, yeah like we, we felt that we were dealt with very well by, uh, by RCR. Um, incidentally it was our sister company Key Diesels which actually supplied the, uh, the engine to us and installed it. Yeah, fifth thing we learnt is uh, always heed the advice of the lock keepers. They, they definitely know their stuff. Um, they, they've been doing this for, for years and years a lot of them. They know the way the tides work, you know how the, 
the fresh water flows off the hills now it affects the tides coming in and going out and um, yeah it's, it always pays to listen to them if it hadn't been for, for their help I think we'd have been in a lot more trouble um, on, on our time in the Trent we're in contact with uh, Neil at Talksea um, we spoke to Richard quite a bit at Keedby and uh, also the, the lock keeper at, at Cromwell and um, they gave us lots of advice on what to do and um, when, when to travel um, so it's always worth not just in the emergency like we had but everyday things like you know, just getting out onto the water when's the best time for you to travel in which direction and uh, your, your options it's best, best to listen to what they say because uh, they certainly know what they're doing lastly and probably the most important message here really is uh, please please don't be put off by this 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 video uh, we were very unlucky um, and uh, majority of the time the waterways are very safe and, uh, and, it's, and it's very very enjoyable so please don't be put off um, our waterways are a unique facility and uh, they, they say that spending time by the water uh, can be therapeutic and uh, uh, we certainly find that we've enjoyed our time on the boat it enables us to see the, uh, the country in a completely different perspective you see loads of beautiful wildlife and scenery and you pass through some, some places you wouldn't otherwise go through if you were just going on the road so uh, yeah just please get out there and, and enjoy it and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll see you one day on the water on um, we're on an airboat called Maggie May so yeah, look out for us okay thanks very much for watching bye